A little over a week ago, I made a video showing you guys how personal interest payments are basically skyrocketing. The amount and percentage of people's household income that is going towards debt payments each month is ballooning. And this is the number one reason why everybody's going broke right now, guys. And when I say everybody, it's an exaggeration, obviously, but everybody speaking for a lot of people, okay? <laughs> Because clearly there's lots of people out there that are doing well for themselves and they're not going broke. But the people that fall into this category, you know who you are. Because take a look at this chart, guys. This is a Fred chart that shows you the pace of wage growth since basically the late 1970s up until today, as well as personal interest payments, okay? The blue line are personal interest payments and the red line is hourly wage growth and only one other time briefly very very briefly personal interest payments went above personal wage growth and when was that in our history hmm the 2008 financial crisis is that a coincidence or what and look how far above it went above wage growth it barely barely went above it pretty much matched wage growth right there and then came plummeting back down where you see that gray line when we had a big recession okay but now it has skyrocketed literally shot straight up past the red line guys which means people all across the board are spending more money than they make it's that simple that's what this chart tells you. What it also tells you that everybody's broke. Like for people who think that this economy is gonna continue going at this rate and we're gonna to continue to see the stock market explode and the housing market explode and unemployment remain low and all of this, all you have to do is look at this one chart, in my opinion, that kind of tells the story of all of it right there. That the bottom line is the average consumer is making less than they're spending right now. That's a dead end road, literally a dead end street. I'm about to walk down a dead end street. You want to see what happens when I walk at the dead end street? You get to the end. <laughs> There's nowhere else to go. It's either jump in the water out there and sink or swim. In my case, I'll just choose to turn around and go back the way I came and hope I find a better way, which is what most people will probably do. Now, I'm not blaming people 100%. I'm not saying this is, you know, everybody's stupid and this is their fault for just spending money on things they don't need. Yes, we do have a lot of that in this country, but no doubt the recent run-up inflation that we've had over the past three years has caused a lot of this, guys. And we can see just by looking at this red line that, yeah, incomes have been going up since 2020 at a sharper pace than they were before, but not to the point that they need to be. Yep, that's the sound of this house sinking underwater because they want $1.9 million for it, and it's a flip on top of a flip purchased in 2019 for 630,000, then again in 2022 for 1.3 million, which is the current owner, and they've been renting it here and there, but they are having some financial troubles, which is why they're selling the house, because they are underwater on their property taxes, likely their mortgage too. 2023 hasn't seen a property tax payment of almost $24,000. Looks like distress continues to build. And you know what makes all of this way worse? Is just the timing couldn't come at a worse time in history because we have this record amount of debt that everybody's in, right? And it's also coming at a time when interest rates are not at record highs, but they are at 20 year highs right now. We haven't seen interest rates this high in this country for a very long time, which means everybody out there that's carrying this debt is paying a larger percentage of their income to service this debt. And they keep talking about how, oh, there's still gonna be three rate cuts this year. Well, according to Vanguard, you know, very renowned uh, brokerage, they don't think there's going to be any rate cuts in 2024. And this seems to be what I keep hearing more and more and more, that despite whatever the Fed is saying, that we're not going to see rate cuts this year, guys. Now, that can be great if you're somebody like me who is saving money and earning that five, five and a half percent on your money right now. That's great. I hope interest rates stay high, this high forever. But you know what? It's bleeding people dry that are buried in debt, which is why I always tell people it's not that hard. You just have to get out of debt. We live in this finance everything world where people are 
you know, using buy now, pay later loans to finance their alcoholic drinks these days, which is just kind of insane. But that's where we're at right now in this country. You know, I was in Brazil in 2014 slash 2015. So I went at the end of 2014 and we spent the new year there in 2015, right? And that was my first time ever leaving the country. I've never been out of the country. Went there with my wife. And you know one thing I couldn't believe about all the stores in Brazil? You can walk into any shoe store or boutique that sells dresses, tank tops, whatever. And you know what they have there? Financing available for everything, okay? And that was a long time ago. That was 10 years ago I was there. And I was blown away back then that, wow, people are, you know, doing like a 12 month 18 month payment program on these shoes and i asked my wife why she's like oh people can't afford to pay the full price so that's the only way they can sell these shoes here okay well as crazy as that sounded back then fast forward 10 years here in america we've caught up with third world countries like brazil people are doing this here now to buy a pair of shoes that's how out of control this has gotten now so if the Fed keeps these interest rates high, it's very bad news for people like that, which is the overwhelming majority of the country, unfortunately. Of course, this announcement from the Fed sent the stock market rallying once again, you know, because whether it's good news or bad news, that's all good news for the stock market these days. It doesn't really matter what's happening, it sounds like. And now the traders are pricing in a 68% chance there's gonna be the first rate cut at the June meeting. They say at Vanguard, they believe the US equity market is highly overvalued at this stage when you need the stock market. And they don't think the Fed's gonna cut rates because they're just not gonna be in the position to be able to. They think inflation is gonna be running too hot and the economy is still gonna be doing too well to cut rates. That's what I've been telling you guys. If they don't cut rates, it means things are going great. Let's keep the rates where they're at. That's what they're doing, right? If things are so great, there's no reason to cut. So sorry out there for anybody who's suffering because of these high interest rates, but the economy is great, guys. So that's why we have high interest rates. Just remember that. In fact, the economy is so great that these high interest rates are designed to cool it all down. Now, something else I mentioned in a previous video were some tips and strategies I had for people to kind of weather this recession and get ahead financially during tough times. And one of my tips was to find a roommate or find a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, a partner, somebody you can share the bills with, right? Because immediately you can cut your housing expenses in half, all your utility expenses in half, potentially even your food costs in half, and make life a whole lot cheaper for yourself. And by doing so, you're able to save a good portion of your income that you weren't able to save before. Well, this recent study I just saw really backs up that as some good financial advice these days, because take a look at this, guys. In order to live comfortably in, as a single person in 99 of the largest U.S. metro areas, you need an income of at least, this is the minimum, $93,933 a year. So you need to be on the precipice of being a six-figure earner in order to live comfortably by yourself in any desirable place to live in this country, apparently. And comfortable is defined as the income needed to cover a 50-30 budget, which assumes 50% of your monthly income pays for necessities like housing and utility costs, and 30% can cover discretionary spending, and 20% can be set aside for savings and investments. So clearly, you could get away with making less than this if you're willing to basically pay all of your money towards your bills and other expenses. But if you wanna live a comfortable life, you need to practically be a six-figure earner if you wanna be single. And in some of the more expensive cities across the country, it is actually far worse than that. New York City is the top one on the list. You need to make $138,500 a year to be single there and live a comfortable life, guys. San Jose, California, it's 136,000 a year. Irvine, California, 126,000 a year. Santa Ana, California, 126,000 a year. San Diego, California, 122,000 a year. San Francisco, California, 119,000 a year. Boston, even Boston, Massachusetts, you need to make 125 G's a year to be a single person there. And some of the other places on this list that aren't even this nice, like Newark, New Jersey, still gotta earn $116,000 a year. Uh, Portland, Oregon, you gotta earn 110,000. So it looks like it's paying off more than ever to have a partner these days and not be trying to go it alone because you could be saving a lot of money by doing so. But you know what? It's not just the average person that's going broke right now. Nope. 
Many commercial real estate property owners are also going broke. The most recent announcement for a very fancy property in San Francisco, California is the Four Seasons, okay? They have defaulted on their loan and the owner was served a notice of default for a $72 million loan that they have there and they bought this hotel back in 2019 for $127 million. Well, how much money do you think that hotel is worth today based on the new numbers, based on, uh, based on San Francisco's current tourism numbers, you know? Because there's not a whole lot of demand for a hotel room in downtown San Francisco these days for obvious reasons. This hotel is gonna be lucky if they can get half of what somebody paid for back in 2019, guys. That means potentially maybe just maybe 60 million or so, that is abysmal compared to the 127 million that somebody already paid for this place. This is just one of the many commercial real estate buildings across the country that is in this position right now. And the more I hear about this, the more I'm kind of convinced that this, along with people's personal debt crisis, are gonna be the two ringleaders in bringing down this economy and kind of causing the next crash and collapse of everything because if people can't afford to pay their bills, think about this, then they're just gonna stop paying for things and that's gonna cause evictions, it's gonna cause foreclosures, it will cause repossessions, different things like that. And when it comes to commercial real estate, it's not the owners of these buildings that are getting hurt. Like, yeah, they're gonna lose all the money they've invested into these places, but they're getting off easy compared to the banks that are hanging on to these loans. And even Jerome Powell himself recently said that we are gonna see more bank failures and it's probably gonna be because of this. You see what happened? I hit the dead end back there and I had to turn around. Time to start over, man, when you hit a dead end in life. Because that's where we're headed right now in this country is a dead end. So, uh, Time to start over pretty soon. But if you have people not paying their bills and you have the bank failures happening simultaneously and potentially people losing money, we don't know what the government's gonna do or what the Fed's gonna do when it comes to uh, potential bank failures in the future. Like we saw what happened last March that they gave people their money back regardless if it was over the FDIC insured limit or not, which is unprecedented, something we've never seen happen before. But their excuse for doing this is, well, if we would have just let those banks completely fail and people lose all this money, then we would already have this crash. Like, yeah, no kidding. So it seems like their status quo and their game plan moving forward is to just prevent all crashes, right? So it's reasonable to think that if we're in a situation where we start seeing multiple bank failures in the future, that they're probably gonna rush in and bail out those banks too. Oh, but at what cost? Well, the cost of the national debt skyrocketing, the cost of the money printer on steroids, and the cost of inflation running through the roof. And if you think it's bad now, it would just be, this would look like everything's cheap compared to how this is gonna turn out if they wanna come in and bail out these banks, guys. So you can see how there's really no good options left for our leaders in charge who are making these decisions. And it's why I just cannot wrap my head around, why won't they just let it crash then? Like, what is the big deal? You know, we're gonna have uh, hardship and economic turmoil either way. And wouldn't the lesser of two evils being letting things come down in price and letting the economy fix itself through having businesses that don't make money go out of business, for having the bank failures that are hanging on to all these bad loans and just let all that stuff happen and there's gonna be unemployment, there's gonna be things happen from that. But on the other side of it, you're gonna see new opportunities arise. You're gonna see people coming out and starting new businesses and solving the problems that we have in a society like that, which will ultimately turn our economy into a strong one that's providing services that people need again. I mean, this is not a far-fetched idea, guys. This is just capitalism 101 I'm talking about here. But these politicians are so afraid to let this sort of collapse happen on their watch that they will do anything to make sure that doesn't happen, including just let inflation run rampant, you know, and increase our national debt by exponential numbers as long as it doesn't happen on their watch. 
And I don't know how people look at this and think that's a good thing. Who's watching what they're doing right now and seeing them increase our deficit and our national debt and thinking, oh yeah, that's great, I'll vote for that. And you know what's so funny right now? People are so divided over politics, like, oh, I'm for Trump or I'm for Biden or whatever. Well, guess what neither one of those guys are gonna do, okay? Neither one of these jokers is going to lower our national debt. Neither one of them has a plan to stop deficit spending either. So people think, that, oh, if Trump gets elected, he's gonna stop all this. No, he isn't, guys. He's gonna keep it going, just spending it on the things that he wants to spend it on, okay? Biden's gonna do the same thing. If he gets reelected, he's gonna keep spending it on things he wants to spend it on. So anybody who thinks that these guys are just gonna turn it around, you know, one's gonna be better than the other in, in that sense, it's not, okay? Here we have another house for sale for 3.15 million, and they just bought it back in 2021 for 1.888. So, you know, everybody's looking to get double or triple. That's pretty fair, you know, over a couple of years, why not? And uh, we rented it a couple times in the meantime. And look, this house only rents for $11,000 a month, by the way, which I should point out, because if you wanna buy this house, you're looking at $23,000 a month in mortgage taxes and insurance payments, and that's with a 20% or $630,000 down payment. No brainer, guys. You should be renting a house like this. Who would pay this? I just don't understand the mentality of who would rather spend 23 grand a month versus 11. I mean, that is just wild. Property taxes here, $42,000 a year, and that's at the old price. Now, when I made the video the other day about the real estate agent commissions, now that we just saw the house, it reminded me to talk about this, is um, I have a few more ideas I wanna bring up about that because there's some things I didn't mention in that video. And one thing I think that we might see happen, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, buyers, agents are gonna be extinct after this. Well, I'm not so sure. Just like we were just talking about now, how the government doesn't want the bank failures. They don't want to see a recession. They don't wanna see anything come down on their watch, right? This could be another thing that somehow gets protected. Even though sellers won't be required to pay a buyer's agent commission moving forward, I'd be willing to bet that new programs get it put into place, maybe even from the lender, that say, well, we know that home buyers don't have the extra money to pay for their realtor, so we can just loan them a little bit extra in order to pay for the real estate agent's commission. And how many people you think will be signing up for that, whether voluntarily knowing they're doing it or not, just to be able to get into a house, guys, because everybody's so desperate to buy a house that if the loan says, oh yeah, we'll pay the commission and we'll just tack it onto your loan, it's only gonna cost you $12 more a month, you can pay your agent. I would not be surprised if something like this happens. So mark my words, if this does happen, you heard it from me first on Michael Bordenero's channel. That's just a prediction. I don't know for sure that's gonna happen, but something I think could possibly happen out of this. And there's also a lot of people out there that are really excited about Bitcoin now that it has hit all-time highs recently. And one thing I've always thought Bitcoin would be a great thing to use for is transacting real estate, okay? Because, you know, people complain, oh, we need to get rid of these buyer's agents, we need to get rid of these commissions for years now. You know, good riddance, thank God it's happening now. But really, you need to look at the entire piece of the pie, guys, because look at how many people get paid in the process, you know? Like, it's not just real estate agents. Appraisers get paid, loan officers get paid, stagers get paid, home inspectors get paid, title companies get paid. You also have to pay for additional lien searches and title searches, that's additional to that. You also have to pay for different taxes and document stamps at closing. There is a mountain of fees that you pay when you buy or sell real estate. There's nobody that can deny that. If we could sell real estate on the blockchain moving forward and have title searches done that way somehow, you could eliminate almost everybody in the real estate process. Forget about just not paying real estate agents. You could make the cost of buying real estate go from thousands of dollars down to maybe a few hundred dollars if a technology like this was implemented. And that's always where I, where I was hoping they would go with Bitcoin and blockchain in the future is make it so that there's a streamlined way to transact real estate in this currency and make it far cheaper than the traditional method, it would blow up. Who wouldn't want an easier way to buy real estate 
with no hassle and on a faster time frame. I think everybody would want that. And I'm also curious to know for any home sellers who are thinking about listing their homes for this spring market or if you already have your home for sale, if this new decision that takes effect in the middle of July where you no longer have to pay the buyer's agent commission, is this gonna influence your decision to keep your house listed for sale? Are you gonna wait until after this whole thing goes into effect so you can specifically not pay a buyer's agent commission? Let us know in the comments because I'm curious to know uh, what people are thinking about this, especially sellers, because this benefits sellers the most, more than anybody else. And I really wanna know how many sellers are specifically gonna wait to list their homes and take advantage of this. And even if you're selling right now, wouldn't it make more sense to just pull your home off the market until July and uh, pay half the commission? I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about that. Now, because the electric cars aren't selling, the Biden administration recently came out and said that, well, we don't have to worry about our EV target deadlines. We're gonna relax those a little bit. Probably this is a re-election move here, you know, because a lot of the automakers and the auto unions are completely against this because they know it's completely unrealistic. And these EV targets have been bleeding them dry. You know, they're losing billions of dollars over unsold EVs right now. So now they're pushing the deadline to 2030 for having 67% of all of the cars sold in this country being EVs or plug-in hybrids. And how much you wanna bet they're just gonna keep delaying this in the future as this just becomes a more unpopular idea as time goes on? Because we've already talked about this before, but the early adopters, people who really wanna have an EV car, have pretty much already bought one. You know, and that's why you're starting to see the sales of them slow down so much and the fact that in many cases they're still more expensive than a gas powered car. And the price of these cars are coming down so fast because the demand has dropped so much. Guys, take a look at this. The average price difference right now between a cheap gas powered car and an EV is only about $5,000 right now. So. There's, they're closing the gap pretty quickly here because the prices have been coming down. You can thank Tesla for that because they have been slashing prices on the Teslas like no tomorrow in order to boost sales. But why are they doing that? Because it's the only way to get somebody to buy it. And many automakers right now, they're pivoting towards selling uh, plug-in hybrids, which is basically a compromise between an internal combustion car and an electric car. And you can't blame them because they're just selling people cars that they actually want to buy. If people say, this is what I want to have, then they're going to sell them that. And I think it's actually kind of smart, you know, having two different technologies in one car, two different ways to power the car is probably better than one. It gives you an alternative choice of fuel and it also creates more convenience. You know, you can choose to charge the car at home if you're home and if you're out and you need gas and you can't find a charging station you don't want to wait for a charging station you can still fill it up with gas so it's kind of the best of both worlds so it's not really a big surprise that these are selling but i just had to bring this up because it just goes to show you that no matter how ambitious uh, our politicians are and want to force us to do things ultimately us as the american people can speak with our votes and what part of the way that we vote is through what we buy, guys. Everything you buy today is a vote on what you want versus what you don't want. And clearly enough people have said, well, we don't want EVs. We're gonna buy a plug-in hybrid or a gas-powered car instead, that they're changing the outlook for when they wanna have more cars be EVs mandated by law in the future. Because of why? Because of your buying behavior. So never forget, that you have that power. As a consumer, as an American citizen, you do have the power to have your voice heard, okay? And this is proof of it right here. And I, know I would even argue to say that your financial vote with things and what you buy is more powerful than your political vote because all these politicians are corrupt, okay? But companies follow the money. So if you want a certain product and you don't want another product, buy what you want and don't buy what you don't want and that's how we get there that's it no matter what the government has to say about it if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe to the channel and if you don't want to wait for my next video to come out check out this one on the screen right over here and i'll see you in the next one